I was starving and I longed for something delicious that required minimal effort. Also, the local McDonald's had been closed down by foreigners spraying it with COVID-19. I scanned my freezer. I didn't feel like hot dogs or the saga. I polished off the last Swanson Salisbury steak the previous night. Hidden under a bunch of popsicles, I found a collapsed ice-encrusted box of hot pockets. I opened it up and found one straggler inside. I felt like I'd won the lottery. Of course, Hot Pockets are made by Nestle, who uses human slave labor, but anyway. I removed the plastic wrapping and held it up to my nose. Even frozen, it smelled good, like a hug from Granny. I grabbed a Dr. Pepper from the fridge and determined that this was the ideal meal for a sophisticated gentleman such as myself. I inserted the Hot Pocket into the microwave without even using a plate and set the timer. I luxuriated for two minutes as I watched my future supper spin through the glass window. My dog sulked in front of her empty food dish. Sorry, buddy. Let me eat real quick, and then I'll grab you something. The microwave dinged, and I removed the steaming envelope of warm dough. I put it on a plate, grabbed a fork and a knife, and sat down at my kitchen table. That's when my hot pocket began acting strange. I was poised to cut into it when my supper started moving. I watched stunned as it spread its doughy lips and emitted a rasping cough. It sprayed bits of marinara sauce onto the plate. What the hell? I said, disheveled. It began to rock back and forth and then made a sound like a mucusy old man clearing his throat. It stopped moving and I prodded it with the end of my fork. The promised one, you have rescued me from my frozen prison, as has been foretold. It was a man's voice with hints of an English accent. You're welcome, I said. It felt like the appropriate thing to say. Years of post-secondary education failed to prepare me for unexpected culinary conversations. I have come with a dire warning. The future of your species is in peril, and only you can prevent utter destruction. I took a long draw from my Dr. Pepper. You understand you are a hot pocket, right? I have no doubts about my identity. It is not the vessel, but the message that should concern ye. Moses spoke to a burning bush. I am no different. All right, I'll bite. The hot pocket flinched. Sorry, bad word choice. What is it you want to tell me? There is one amongst ye, a local inhabitant. He works at some grocery store for which you rescued me. The Savon Foods? Yes. Now he stalks the freezer. But years from now, he will be a renowned microbiologist. He will lead a research team that will discover horrible truths that, once unleashed, cannot be contained. His discovery will result in worldwide epidemics of smallpox, Ebola, and the Black Plague. The spread of vital illnesses will cripple civilization as you know it. Well, that was pretty heavy, especially coming from the animated mouth of my supper. And what do you expect me to do about it? I asked. He must kill him. If his life ceases now, his future discoveries will remain unknown. Wait, what? I spilled the remains of my soda and ran to grab a paper towel. Are you asking me to kill some minimum wage punk? Tis the only way. 
and it must happen tonight. Tomorrow he leaves for university, and you will lose your opportunity. I, I, I shook my head. There's, there's no way I'm gonna kill someone. I don't even like stepping on bugs. It's just not in me. Ye must. This is your destiny, and the only way to redeem your bloodline. My bloodline? Yes. Back in 1923, a plate of Wiener Schnitzel warned your great-grandfather about a certain German corporal who'd go on to do terrible things. But he failed to act, and millions died as a result. This is the stupidest fucking thing I ever heard, I said. But then I remembered what my grandma always told me about how her father couldn't deal with his regrets. If you fail to act, you will watch everything you hold dear collapse around you, and you will know that you could have prevented it. Okay, let's say you're right. How am I going to kill this person? I don't even know who they are. At exactly 8.15 tonight, you will exit out the door while shipping and receiving. You will find a shaded nook and smoke a marijuana cigarette. <clears throat> or as we British call it, the faggot. This is when you will strike. My mind reeled. I didn't have it in me. Certainly there were times that with certain people would die, but never in a million years did I expect to be the agent of their destruction. However, if what the Hot Pocket said was indeed true, then I could save the world. This was a lot to take in at once. Won't the police come after me? I asked. Yes, they will. Do not be alarmed. I will explain everything. Bring, they, bring me to them. I, I, the truth will set you free. All right, I said reluctantly. I'll do it. Excellent! The Hot Pocket quivered with excitement. May I ask ye one additional favor? My brethren are trapped in the same icy dungeon from which you rescued me. Please, we must reunite. I'll do what I can, I said. I patted my dog on her head. Okay, buddy, I'll be back real soon, all right? I hopped into my pickup truck and drove off. An hour later, I parked in an unlit shadow behind the grocery store. It's 8.14, and the future microbiologist should be out any second. The large door rattled open, and I saw someone emerge. He didn't look like a threat to global security. He had thick black glasses, a goatee, and he held a large textbook. He looked around before retreating behind a wall. I watched his face light up as he lit a joint. I scrutinized him from the darkness of my truck as he leafed through his book and took another drag. I can't do this, I thought. I don't even have a murder weapon. What What did I think I was going to do? Walk up and punch him to death? Strangle him? Ah, I didn't think this through. After five minutes, he stubbed out his pot on the wall, stood up, and started his walk back to work. I noticed he left his textbook behind, got out of my truck, bent over, picked it up. The book was entitled An Introduction to Microbiology. All doubt drained from my mind. This was the individual whose hubris would topple everything humanity had built up over the course of millennia. I had to act. Hey, I shouted. You forgot your buck. The guy turned around. He had a sheepish, recently baked look. He walked back towards me and he saw the book. Oh, hey man, thanks for that. Then I bashed his brains in. Now the book was four inches thick and had to weigh ten pounds. Felt like I was swinging a rectangular sledgehammer. Each impactful blow sucked the life out of him. I continued until he stopped breathing. It's done. Drop the blood spattered textbook. Dragged the corpse back to the wall and propped him up so it looked like he was just sitting there. Weekend at Bernie's? Anyone? On my way back to the truck, I, I remembered the talking Hot Pockets request. 
still had to rescue his fellow Hot Pockets. So I parked in front of the grocery store and bought every single box they had. It cost me $450. They almost overflowed out of the back of my truck. I used a self-checkout machine because I didn't want the cashier to see me covered in fresh blood. So, ten minutes later, back home. And, uh, well, I uh, kind of immediately notice that there's a problem. The talking hot pocket is missing. I frantically scan the kitchen. Then, from behind the corner, I hear my dog chewing on something. I find her in her bed as she's taking the last gulp of the talking hot pocket. If only I had fed her. Oh, shit, I said. That hot pocket was my literal get-out-of-jail-free card. I needed that talkative frozen pastry to tell the police I wasn't some deranged killer. This was a major complication. Wait, the other hot pockets. If I cook them up, maybe they could speak on his behalf. I return to my truck, and over the course of a dozen trips, I hold every box into my kitchen. Then I start cooking them up. Microwave, toaster oven, a conventional oven, I use them all. After three hours, I had hundreds of Hot Pockets scattered all around my home, on plates, on shelves, on tables, and on the floor. Not a single one spoke. That's when I heard a loud rapping at the front door. I looked out the kitchen window and I saw the telltale blue and red lights of the police. It was too late. I was screwed. Worst of all, I was still starving. So I grabbed a random hot pocket and took a ravenous bite. It was cold in the middle and started crying. 